Morgan Pressel is on the call this week from Augusta, Georgia. And Morgan joins us right now. Morgan, you're out there at Champions Retreat. We had Mega Gane and Emilia Migliaccio on the show yesterday, both of whom said that's actually the tougher course in some respects at the Augusta National Women's Amateur every year, that it probably doesn't get the respect that it deserves. What, what do you need to see from the competitors this week in these first couple of rounds out there so they can make their way down the street to Augusta National? Well, good afternoon, I guess, at this point, guys. But it's great to be here. Excited to be here at Champions Retreat for the next couple of days. Um, the golf course is in fabulous shape. It's kind of a tale of two nines. They're going to get a little bit of a taste of Augusta National with the tremendous und undulation on the back nine here. Um, there are some small greens, some very undulating greens. We're expecting some weather to come in. But, you know, everybody here really wanting to make that top 30, that cut, to be able to play a competitive round of golf, not just a practice round, on Augusta National come Saturday. Um, but the weather, we have some weather moving in tomorrow. It could make for an interesting couple of days here. I think Champions Retreat will play very difficult uh, with the wind that's expected to pick up. And uh, it's going to be a little bit different than the practice. As you can see, it is a spectacularly warm and beautiful day here uh, at Champions Retreat today. Morgan, this is the fifth Augusta National Women's Amateur. How has the event evolved over the years? Yeah, it's, I mean, in five years, I guess six years with the one year off, it, it's become clearly the most impactful event in women's amateur golf. And I think that's really important. You've seen uh, certainly from the first matchup, uh, watching Maria Fossey and Jennifer Cupcho battle it coming down the stretch at Augusta National, gone on to be two stars on the LPGA Tour. Of course, Rose Zhang uh, and what she was able to accomplish in, in terms of stardom after winning here at Augusta National and then going on to validate by winning her very first start on the LPGA Tour, as you guys just mentioned. Um, uh, you know, Anna Davis became a superstar overnight and I'm actually really interested to see how she plays this week after what happened in her title defense last year getting a four shot penalty basically on the very first hole of the championship because she played lift clean and place in the rough in the wrong spot on the golf course and uh, she was really able to shake that off and bounce back nicely but I, I'm really excited to see her compete here this week uh, hopefully without any rule snafus. I'm wondering if there's a, a favorite in your mind, given the caliber of competitors who are out there, Morgan. You look at Ingrid Lindblad, who's number one in the World Amateur Golf Ranking. She just had her 14th career college victory at LSU. Is she someone you look at this week as worthy of a lot of attention out there? Absolutely. You cannot in ignore Ingrid. Uh, the first time I got the chance to watch her was at Pine Needles when she was um, the low amateur in the Women's Open. And very impressive there, I believe. Nearly a top 10 T11 there, and uh, I watched her on the range yesterday. You know, she's got her longtime coach from home in town this week watching over her. I would expect big things from her. She wants to turn pro and join the professional ranks um, after this season, and this is her last chance, and I know that that's definitely weighing on her mind, and, and that brings back memories, really, of Roseng, who knew, even though maybe we didn't know, she knew that this was going to be her very last Augusta National Women's Amateur and wanted to go out with a bang. Do you think there's scar tissue involved for Ingrid? Because she was very close to the playoff a couple of years ago. Then she bogeyed in the following year, the 18th hole to finish one back. Augusta National, you know, fans are so intimately familiar with the golf course. We all know the tragedies and triumphs over the years there. And Ingrid's actually got her share of them as well. Do you think there's a little scar tissue that represents a hurdle for Ingrid that others in the field perhaps don't have to face this week? I think it's a little bit of both. I think one is experience. I think it's golf. You're going to develop scar tissue. Granted, amateurs and the young players in this field have a little bit less than as you progress through the game, but also a desire for redemption. She knows how to play this golf course. She knows she can put herself, both of these golf courses, she knows how to put herself in position to win championships and has done that uh, through the collegiate ranks for many years. And so, yes, maybe a little bit of scar tissue, but that also builds character and builds resilience. And um, I would expect her to come out in, with full redemption mode here this week. Morgan, it's a bit unique where you, you prep for Champions Retreat, 36 holes there, then the practice round for Augusta for those 30 players who advance for that final round on Saturday. What's the difference in mentality when it comes to scoring opportunities with Champions Retreat to then what you see for those final 18 holes, which is more of the sprint to the finish? 
Yeah, I think, I think as I mentioned earlier, it's really going to depend on weather. We're not quite sure what's going to happen. There's a front that's supposed to come through tomorrow morning. Temperatures are going to fall pretty dramatically. We could have potentially some very gusty winds tomorrow. Uh, I, I know there's been talk of let's hope we get the golf in tomorrow uh, entirely. We have a, a little bit of a buffer there, a few hours to play with. But um, the weather on Saturday is supposed to be gorgeous. So I believe the scoring conditions relative to weather will be much um, more conducive to lower scores on Augusta National. We know how that back nine can play and, and how many fun scoring opportunities there are. As you did mention disaster, but there's also the opportunity to really make a move. And so it's really just about putting yourself in position these two days. I think staying patient. Like I said, there are some small greens out here, really keeping your ball in the right spot on these greens. As the wind picks up, it's going to be even more difficult to putt. So just players being cognizant of that, watching the leaderboard. Um, and, you know, in, in a mentality, I always say you never really want to try to make the cut. You usually end up missing the cut by one. So go out there and you want to be, you'd like to be in that top three, almost nearly leading the tournament by the time you get to Augusta National. We do have some players this week, Morgan, who are playing their third, fourth, in some cases, even their fifth Augusta National women's amateur. What do you think is the value of experience? And does that help kind of dilute some of the nerves that might otherwise exist? Uh, yeah, I would say no question. Players who have been in this position have stood on that tee um, certainly on Saturday at Augusta National and had their name announced um, and, and hit that first tee shot for the first time. Uh, they're going to be a little bit less nervous having done it again. But if they do happen to be in that final group, all those nerves might come back. Uh, I, I think the fact that it's a race to learn both of these golf courses, that's where experience really helps. Um, you know, players getting the chance to play Champions Retreat today and then one practice round on Augusta National. And if you've never played either of these golf courses, that's a really tough way to learn a course so quick, so quickly. You really have to rely on a caddy who hopefully has done a good bit of homework or maybe even rely on a local who knows the golf course better than anybody. Morgan, good to spend some time with you. We'll be watching this week. Uh, thanks, guys.